Well, now that you're busy setting up your RV with solar panels and upgrading your battery bank to lithium batteries, have you thought about what you're going to do when you don't have enough sun to keep those batteries charged up? Because this is a reality if you spend a significant amount of time off grid in your RV and it's going to depend on where you're camping, the time of year, and uh, you know the amount of solar that you can actually put on your rig. So I want to show you, you know, how we're using additional equipment to keep our batteries charged up during those times when solar is just inadequate. And I want to answer a very common question that I get, which is, uh, why don't you use a DC to DC charger? In those situations when you don't have enough solar to keep your batteries charged up, then uh, you're just going to rely on an alternative source of energy to get power back in to your, uh, your battery bank. It sort of models, you know, how we would normally live in our sticks and bricks house. You know, put the things in your RV that you need, that you want to use, and you just, you know, live like you normally would and consume the power that you normally would. You know, your coffee pot, you can use your microwave. You know, all the things that you uh, designed your solar and off-grid system around. You know, maybe you even have air conditioners and stuff now because this is your home if you're living in here for months at a time or if you're full-timing. Now, the reality is, is that if you're uh, usually seeking out sunny open spots and you have uh, a properly sized uh, solar and battery system, the likelihood of you being uh, in need of, you know, some secondary sources of energy is going to probably be minimal. But uh, there are those instances where you're going to need something else. Now we have a, uh, a Victron system installed on our motorhome. It's a 3000 watt inverter and about 800 amp hours of lithium batteries and roughly 1700 watts of solar installed on the roof. And it's uh, really uh, suitable for our needs. It seems to work just fine and we can go for months on end, you know, just uh, relying on our solar and batteries. But, uh, you know, there are times that uh, we do get a little behind on our, on our battery capacity and our solar just isn't keeping up. And that's usually a result of bad weather, you know, a few days of bad weather, we'll, we'll do it because, you know, we don't necessarily adjust, you know, we're not going to like <laughs> turn off our Starlink or, you know, not uh, use some of these um, <laughs> electrical components because, uh, because we're low. We're just going to deal with it. But when we uh, do encounter those situations, we're going to primarily rely on our generator. So what's interesting is that the primary purpose of our generator these days is being used as a battery charger, which is kind of weird, right? Uh, we don't really have a need for, you know, a large generator. Since we have 12 volt uh, air conditioners, uh, they don't use as much power as, as power hungry old air conditioners did. So, you know, the 5,500 watt generator we have is, is really oversized for what you need. And it's just a big old giant <laughs> battery charger. But when we do fire it up, you know, we can do that while driving. We can just do that when we're parked. So we turn on the generator and that provides pass through power through our Victron uh, inverter. And the issue is that uh, the inverter has a limit of how much current it can actually charge. And that limit is uh, 120 amps. Now, if you do the math and you calculate how much 120 amps is at say 13 volts or so, that only comes out to about 1500 watts. So you're really not utilizing the, uh, the amount of uh, power that the generator can provide and you're just running it, but you're only using a fraction of it. What we do now is uh, actually use this battery charger here, and this is an 80 amp battery charger that's hardwired in. So now what I can do is using the generator through the inverter is uh, provide an additional 80 amps to total about, you know, up to 200 amps of battery charging. 
So let me fire it up for you. I'll show you how we, uh, we recharge the batteries. We're at about 84% right now. And if you are just getting started with solar and you're just kind of in this learning phase and trying to figure it all out, you probably have a lot of questions. A link to uh, our free guide to getting started with RV solar. It's free, it's got a lot of information, a lot of frequently asked questions and, uh, and resources for you to check out. But I'll put a link there for you so you can go check that out. But uh, let's go ahead and um, fire this up. I've been running my electric water heater just off grid here, just to draw my battery bank down so we can do this uh, demonstration. So we'll watch the monitor here as I uh, fire up the generator. You'll see it kick in here under this grid connection. And I'll uh, disconnect our solar. So I just want to take the solar out of the equation because right now it's uh, bringing in about 620 watts, even though it's kind of cloudy today. I just heard it. So we should see it pop in, okay. 150 watts, 1400. So it should kick into a uh, charging mode. So with the solar right now, it's uh, it's charging the batteries at 140 amps, but that also includes the solar, and it's uh, supplying what little uh, AC power load I currently have. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the uh, solar right now, so we can isolate that. Okay, my solar disconnect is off, so now we have zero or one or two you know, watts coming in solar. So now we have a more realistic look at what our battery charging is. And it's uh, 105 amps, it's subtracting these other things that it's powering as well. And you can see right now the, uh, the generator is it's pushing in about 1900 watts is all it's really needing right now. So we're in a bulk charging mode right now and uh, we're charging the battery at about 106 amps. And you know, as you can see, the, the generator is really not being uh, taxed that much right now. So what we can do is uh, turn on the, uh, the battery charger now and it's gonna add some more current to this. I should hear it, uh, hear the fan kick on. There it goes. First of all, the generator jumped up, so now it's supplying about 3,300 watts. And the uh, charge current coming into the battery is now up to 173 amps. So I've boosted my charging now on the battery. So I can just run my generator, it's just going to charge up my batteries faster. All right, now I want to show you how I have this uh, the secondary charger all wired up, but before I do that, I wanna point out a couple of important things. The first thing is that if you decide to do this, make sure that your uh, lithium battery bank is capable of accepting that much current. So you would look at the uh, the maximum uh, current that, uh, that the battery can take for charging, and then if you have multiple batteries connected together in parallel, you're probably gonna be okay for, for this amount of current. Um, just double check those and then if you're in parallel you can just add them up. Now if you just have one lithium battery you may be a little bit short so you may want to double check that and uh, just make sure you're within that maximum uh, charge limit. Otherwise your battery uh, BMS might just uh, throw a fault and shut down. Now the next thing to look at is the maximum uh, current output setting for your inverter. Now if you have that dialed down you know from 50 amps or, or less, then you may want to bump that up to like 30 or 40 amps. Uh, I just typically bump it up to 40 amps uh, while I'm doing this charging. Uh, if you have it set too low, then the inverter is not going to allow as much power to come through from your generator. Because the idea here is to maximize the, uh, the amount of uh, power you can get from your generator, even though like in my case, I'm not going to be able to hit the maximum for the generator, but I can get as much as, as possible. So let's take a look at the charger real quick. Uh, basically, the goal here is to find something that you can hardwire. You know, you can buy a lot of chargers out there that are lithium compatible. And uh, some of them, like this one here, this is a maximum 50 amp, but they may come with these like, you know, battery alligator clips 
and uh, you know have various features, various maximum output current. Uh, what we're looking for is something that can be uh, hardwired, and it's going to come with uh, some ring terminals that are designed to hook on to your battery or some sort of bus bar or terminal and uh, be easier to uh, to get connected because the alternative is if you use something like this you're going to have to cut these cables and you're going to have to make new cables and connections so there's just a little bit more work and I went with Lee Time they have a bunch of these uh, of these lithium compatible uh, chargers and I think they have like a 10 amp 20 60 and this is the largest one which is 80 amps. This one comes with a longer uh, cable to run to uh, you know the batteries or bus bar in my case and a longer power cable and even though this one's kind of big it, it fits in this compartment here which is very conveniently located uh, and I can close the door easily get to it turn it on as a power switch here and uh, the nice thing is it's real close to this outlet right next to it, which is tied to a, a 20 amp uh, AC, 120 volt AC outlet, which is connected to this one here too, which is just right off the kitchen counter. So it's even GFCI protected. The other nice thing about this one is it has a long cable and I have enough length to get from here underneath the uh, cabinets here and down into the compartment below here where my batteries are and my main DC bus bar is. So it comes with uh, two uh, Anderson connectors that I can just connect together and one end connects to the to the bus bar or battery and the other end connects to the uh, the charger here. So I can plug them in, disconnect them as needed. So it's pretty handy. And I'm also using a, a terminal fuse on the on the battery side to uh, just provide some overcurrent protection and uh, it it's just a 100 amp fuse that I have wired in on that uh, terminal connection. So after all of this, have you figured out why I don't use a DC to DC charger? Yeah, well, I think the, uh, the, the answer's uh, pretty clear, but the reason is because I just don't think I need one. Uh, while I'm driving, you know, if I need to, I just uh, turn on the generator from right here while I'm driving, and I can have Melissa turn on that uh, that charger as well. And uh, you know I can get what 175, potentially up to a couple hundred amps of charge into my battery bank while I'm driving, plus whatever I'm getting from solar. Now what I'm going to get from uh, a DC to DC uh, charger is going to probably be around 50 amps if I'm looking at, say, the Victron Orion XS 12 volt. I think it's a 50 amp charger. So I could wire one up, but uh, I can get, you know, almost three to four times the amount of current into my battery bank just by running my generator for a little while while I drive than I would get from a DC to DC charger. Now keep in mind, we do have a larger RV with more space for more solar panels. Now if you're in a smaller rig, you may still have a larger battery bank, but your solar may be a bit limited, which means you have to rely more on a secondary source of uh, power for charging. So yeah, if you're in a, a small class C or a B or a van, then a DC to DC charger is definitely a wise investment. But yeah, let me know what you think of this setup. And if you uh, have tried something similar, I look forward to hearing uh, what you have to say. I hope it helps you out and gives you some ideas. But uh, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.